purpose in you because you keep parading your pain. Your testimony will have more power if nobody knew how bad you were tested until you told us. In victory, not defeat. Oh my God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Prepare for the pressure. The bruises on your shoulder tells God that you can handle the pressure. You can handle the weight. That you always choose to do stuff that people don't want to do. God can depend on you to get something done when everybody else is running. You will run into it. That is not scars. Those are not bruises. Those are battle marks. What we appreciate about David the most is not his dancing and his praising. He was a mighty warrior. Everybody appreciates somebody that can fight. David's fighting was self-imposed. Nobody wanted to fight the lion, but David said, I'll be the one. Ah! Self-imposed pressure is the kind of pressure that I respect. The kind of pressure where you are willing to take the hardest task on the team. The kind of pressure where you are willing to take it off of your leader and assume it. The kind of pressure where you will take on the challenge of God. God is more interested in our maturity and our mindfulness than our acceptance. Real faith requires freedom. If you don't get free, you won't be here long. Because to stay in the faith, you're going to have to be delivered. Because when the pressure comes, if you are not delivered, you're going to go all the way back to your old habits, your old way of thinking, you're going to return to them old relationships and that old offended mind. When you embrace a relationship with God, it includes process, protocol, and pressure. How can you obey a salvation that you're not submitted to? How can you reap the benefits of something that you haven't labored for? And how can you appreciate a love that you're not willing to lose yourself to gain? See, all of these areas of our faith have so much process and protocol built into it. That's why most people don't last in the faith. There's purpose in your pain. But if you always put the pain in your pain, you will never find the purpose in your pain. There's a purpose why after getting beat, you will survive. There's a purpose why after getting kicked out, you were still smart enough to graduate. There was, there was a purpose why after getting used and abused, you still had enough to survive, to become greater than where you were when they left you like that. Tell somebody your pain and your problems and your pressure and your purpose are all related. All Things work together for the good. Ah! He gonna use my shame for my good. Oh, gee. He gonna use my embarrassment for my good. He gonna use the abuse for my good. He's gonna use the embarrassment for my good he's gonna use my poverty for my good he gonna use the rejection for my good and this is the biggest one he gonna use my thorn and my limp ah, for my good grab your bibles Lord, bless us in the word today, deep down, in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians, one more time, let's go here and let's see what the Lord is saying. And give me just about 15 minutes. I, I, I don't want to preach long. As we delve into chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians, Paul was actually in the, in the midst of having an outburst. And 
was in the midst of actually <laughs> having a perhaps a Holy Ghost fit if you would people had discounted what he was doing so much that they begin to accuse him of being a fool and if you have never been accused, if, if, if you have never in the faith, because of your faith, by your faith, your faith decisions, your faith choices, even where you're located right now, if it's by faith, if you have never been accused of being foolish, then you, don't, you ain't in the right place. That's right. That's right. You're not in the right place if being in the right place has not made you look like a fool to somebody. Do I have any witnesses out there? Do I have any witnesses that know what it's like to be under the accusation of doing everything wrong? But you're doing everything God said to. I know we would have loved to receive praise and commendation and affirmation after doing what God said do. That's why the faith sometimes can confuse you because you came out of the world and everybody supported what you were doing in the world. It's interesting how, glory to God, how much respect drug dealers get. It's interesting how much respect gang members get. Yeah, It's interesting that when we were in the world and doing everything but the right thing, nobody called us a fool. But then we get here. And people want to know, what are you doing? What, what, what are you doing with yourself? What are you doing with your time? Wait a minute, what are you doing with your money? Wait a minute, why are you always? And so Paul said, if y'all going to call me a fool, then let me talk like a fool. And so in the midst of this Pentecostal fit, and if you don't believe what I'm saying, you can see it, what it right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16. He said, let no one take me for a fool, but if you do, then tolerate me just as you would a fool so that I may do a little boasting. <laughs> Paul said, glory to God, in verse 21, whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to speak like a fool for a moment. And then verse 24, he says, and I'm reading from the New International Version for your understanding. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beat with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a day and a night in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been constantly on the move. I've been constantly on the move. But not the kind of move that you respect. The kind of move that you don't want to have any parts with. What Paul's being on the move, what the moves that Paul was, was making, Taylor, he said, I've been in danger from rivers. I've been in danger from bandits. I've been in danger from my fellow believers. <laughs> I've been in danger from my believers and then from my haters, the Jews and the Gentiles. He said, I've been in danger in the city. I've been in danger in the country. I've been in danger in the sea. There's nowhere else you can go but up from there. He said, I've been in danger from false believers. He said, I've labored and I have toiled and I've gone without sleep. I've known hunger. I've known thirst. I've often gone without food. He said, I've been cold and I've been naked. And beside all of that, I face daily pressure from the church. Oh, let me be clear. Church is. I'm an apostle church as part two of this sermon prepare for the pressure tell your neighbor sit down but prepare <laughs> but prepare for the pressure listen don't isolate the pressure that you're dealing with right now as being the end all be all. I know that because it's happening to you, it's intense. 
But I want you to know there's another pressure coming. That's not the only one. And if you think that what you're going through right now is going to kill you, I don't know how you're going to act if God shows you what else you're going to have to go through to get into your purpose. And so what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to get caught up in this moment because there's another moment coming. But if you believe the word of God like I believe the word of God, I recall the Holy Spirit letting me know that he would never put more on us than we can bear. In other words, the pressure that you're experiencing, the problems, the conflict, the issues, the stress, the trauma, whatever nuance, the word you want to put on it, you it was designed just for you. Your, your problems were designed for you. Just like your purpose was designed for you, your purpose has specific problems designed for the one who is purposed. In other words, if you never had any significance in the faith, you would not be going through what you're going through. If, if, if your life was never going to be as important as it will become, then you wouldn't be going through what you're going through. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, to whom much is giving. Oh, my God. And so if God releases you from some of the pressure, then that means he's lowered his requirement. Oh, my God. In other words, you got to learn how to thank God that he built you for this. Oh, y'all not saying, oh, come on here. Glory to God. You got to learn how to thank God that he actually designed your stress. Glory to God as being a stress test. <laughs> Glory to God. Everything that's built to survive has to go through a stress test. Huh? If it doesn't go, if it doesn't go through a stress test, then that means there's no quality in it. If it doesn't go through a stress test, then that means there's no longevity in it. Oh, I wish y'all would help me today. If it doesn't go through a stress test, then that means there's not a lot of value in it. The reason why you keep going through problem after problem and it seems like God won't let you, God won't let up on you is because there's so much quality in you. It's because, because there's so much value in you. It's because there's a millionaire in you. It's because there's an inventor, an innovator in you. It's because, baby, you were built to solve some problems in this earth. Hallelujah. Can't value you if you ain't been through anything. Because you won't last real long around here. Oh, come on, somebody. I can't talk about nobody else's church, but amen. Melanie and Raquel were here for years, and they know if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Glory to God. The Citadel is not an easy place to serve, y'all. <laughs> You're going to leave from the citadel, glory to God, and you're going to be somebody's best member ever. They're going to say, wow, it's just like you, it's just like I could just tell you to do something and you, whether you want to do it or not, I can't tell. Baby, let me tell you where I came from. I came from the citadel of praise. Glory to God. I came from under a pastor who would put pressure on you when you was feeling good. You didn't know what was coming to you next. Somebody ought to say, I thank God for my church. I thank God for the stress that came behind it. I thank God for the burden that came behind it. I thank God for all of the calamity that came behind it. Because what it did is it made me a super saint. God, you can trust me with it. Yeah. Give yourself.
your sister, your brother, a high five and say, you ought to thank God that you, that he sent you here. Because he's shaping you here. He's molding you here. He's getting you ready for that dream job. He's getting you ready for that dream career. He's getting you ready for the next level of the anointing. Glory to God, you can take it. You can make it. You can survive it. Look at somebody and say, there's value in you. There's, I'm going to survive the stress test. Hallelujah. The car ain't safe if it hasn't survived the stress test. The seat ain't worth sitting in. Oh, y'all not saying nothing to me. Glory to God, the only way they're going to be able to get you out of that position is if they create another one for you. Because you have been tested. You have been tried. You are quality assured. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Glory to God, you're going to get married one good time. Look at somebody and say, the next one can't fool me. Because I've been through too much. I, 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 I. You can't fool me with your like. You can't fool me with your lust. What God have put me through, what God processed me through, what I survived, and it could have been another way. I could have lost my mind behind the rejection and the last relationship and the fact that I can still love and the fact that I can still feel and the fact that I can still give my soul. Oh, y'all not saying nothing to me. It's because I survived the pressure. Sit down. You, you will look like a fool surviving the stress test. Because one thing is, uh, it's always seemingly a better way out of it. Huh? You cannot tell me that going through everything that Paul had to go through and nobody knows what you have to go through but you. People will always tell you you could do this. People will always give you options. Some of you, glory to God, amen, you struggled because you knew you had to struggle. And people will call you and say, you don't have to struggle, but your spirit. You can come over here and stay over here, but your spirits are. You can come back home and just be going. I, 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 you ain't gotta. You ain't gotta catch the Uber. I, 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 I'm a, let me just. I just gotta work this out. Glory to God. God, because God was maturing you, and with, glory to God. When you really get grown, you wanna go through what you gotta go through. You don't always want out. You don't always want the easy way. You don't always want the most popular thing. I just got, I want to be the man that God called me to be. I want to be the pastor that God created me to be. I want to be the prayer warrior. I want to be the praise leader. I want to be the trustee. I want to be the deacon that God anointed me to be. So I just got to deal with the pressure. I know you love me, mama. I know you love me, daddy. But let me go through so I can get to And so I say to all you weak-minded people, prepare. Glory to God. Just look at three people and tell them prepare. To, I, I, I'm not trying to call you weak. I just want to make sure everybody gets the notice. Just prepare, prepare, prepare. You might have to go through the hardest semester that you ever had. But baby, you're going to come out stronger than you ever been. Prepare, pre prepare, prepare. Glory to God. Amen. The one you love may end up leaving you. Prepare. The Bahasika, 
Prepare. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. The engine may blow up. Just prepare. <laughs> Glory to God. Behind every dark cloud, there's a silver line. And somebody say, prepare, prepare, prepare. You may be working hard and they may fire you. Prepare. As long as you didn't quit, prepare. I'm really attracted in Paul's outburst in his Pentecostal fit, in his boasting, I'm really attracted to how he said, amongst many things that he went through, there's two things that amaze me. And one of them I dealt with on last Friday night in Durham. That was where that clip was from. And so I won't spend any time talking to you all about his last comment because it's crazy. And I don't have enough time to rehash that, but it's crazy that after going through everything that he went through, that he still had to deal with the church. It lets you know church drama is nothing new. <laughs> that even the earliest church had its problems. You don't leave church because of problems. It's always been here. You, you don't leave church because of controversy. Y'all not saying nothing to me. It's always been here. You... You don't leave church because of the pressure. You don't do that. You don't do that. that, that, that that's not, that's not going to help you. Because from the top to the bottom, it's crazy. Everybody wants the blessings to flow. But you want the problems to stop at the pulpit. But what Paul revealed to you is that even at the helm of church leadership, we're going through hell. All right, but I don't want to deal with that as much as I want. I'm, I'm, my curiosity is drawn to verse 26 when Paul said, I've been constantly on the move. <laughs> constantly on the move. And he said, I've been in danger on land, in danger at sea. I've been in danger in the city. I've been in danger in the country. And I've been in danger on the water. And when you think about the three places where your feet can be planted, there was literally nowhere else for Paul to go but up. I, I, I'm attracted to this because many people in today's mentality would be trying to commit suicide at sea. And Paul had a spirit of determination in him. I can't call anywhere home, but I know I got to survive. Paul must have grabbed the revelation is that I cannot go anywhere else from here but up. Shh. Oh my God. For those of us that are experiencing pressure everywhere, get ready for elevation. Can't go to a family meeting without some stress. Can't go to work without some stress. Can't go out and celebrate a birthday without some stress. Can't go on vacation without having to deal with the traumas there. When you have to fight everywhere you're going and you're nice to everybody. You know, because sometimes you can be defensive. That's a different fight than just being doing what you're doing. You're winning and you're still fighting. I ain't talking about the defensive fight where you starting the arguments, where you starting the drama, where you bringing the lies. Tell somebody, that was my old ways. I, I ain't specialized in that in a long time. But I'm winning and I'm still fighting. Oh my God. 
I'm paying people's bills and I'm still having to fight. Huh? I'm giving people birthday presents that didn't even tell me happy birthday and I'm still having to fight. Huh? I'm not cheating. I'm being cheated on and I'm still having to fight in this relation. Oh my God, what did you say? I'm coming to work and staying late and I'm still the one? It's because you're getting ready to be elevated. Glory to God. When you can't find anywhere to call home where you have been, it means that you're getting ready to go to the next level. Oh my God. <laughs> Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, get ready for promotion. Tell them after the pressure comes promotion. Uh, after the fight comes victory. Glory to God, hallelujah. And that's not just me talking. That's the word of God. After that, you have suffered a little while. He will strengthen you. He will establish you. And he will perfect you. Glory to God, baby. You ought to start planning out your dream home. You ought to start decorating, designing the rooms in your head. You ought to pick out go online and pick out the car that you want and build it to your specification because the way you and I've been fighting go where they got a promotion is in all I am amazed at what pressure can do for us some of the best things of life are made under pressure. Oh, y'all not saying nothing. Tiara, some of the best things. You, you could have chosen any school, but you chose one of the best schools. Ah. That means that you're not afraid of the pressure. Some of you all are aiming too low. That's why the prize isn't that great. But some of you may be like David in here. If I'm going to fight, then let me fight the biggest giant in the land. Oh, my Shia. Glory to God. But you don't look strong enough. The race is not given to the swift or to the strong. How you so little? How in the world are you go? I said, up a watch me. Oh, but you so young. How in the world? Don't doubt me because there's an anointing in me. What I don't have in height. And what I don't have in muscle, I have in the spirit. Slap somebody with their anointed self and say you can win the battle. You can win the battle. Tell your neighbor, fight your fight, bro. Fight your fight, sis. Come on, you are made for this. Oh my God, if God brought it to you, he can bring you through it. Ah, uh, there's an anointing on you to win. Somebody get up and take three steps and say, I'm anointed to win. Understand why when you come out, it's going to look like you've never been through anything. Oh, y'all not talking back to me. 
<laughs> Glory to God. I said, people are not going to understand that when you come out, it's going to look like you've never been through. Huh? Baby, I came through pressure. Huh? I'm the diamond. I'm the diamond in the rough. Glory to God, you're going to be the thing that everybody wants, but nobody can afford. Because remember, I told you, if you're going through hell, that means God is putting value in you. And when you stop living cheap, you appreciate quality over... Let, 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 me, let me let that go because some of you all need to stop selling yourself so cheap. You need to stop dating cheap. You need to stop falling in cheap love, man. It's too much quality in you. Some, that's why sometimes I don't understand who it is you're breaking through here. It's too much quality in you. designing for you my dear is something better than you've ever had and something better than you've ever experienced but you can't buy this you have to survive this Every imagination of quitting, every imagination of suicide, every imagination, every, every fantasy of just giving up and going back needs to go to hell. It needs to go to hell. If you have dealt with any of that in, this, in, this, in these seven months, I dare you to get it on your mind and say, go to hell. Go to hell. Devil, you demon, go to hell. You spirit of doubt, go to hell. You spirit of fear, go to hell. You spirit of insecurity, come on, I, this is spiritual warfare. This ain't preaching right now, this is spiritual warfare. Glory to God, you ought to tell it, go to hell. I loose you. I, 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 I renounce you. I rebuke you. You principality of cowardice. I have no part in you. I command my mind to continue to press. And I command my quitting to go to hell. I command my mind to continue to serve God. And I command my sin to go to hell. I command my spirit to be joyful in the Lord. And I command my sadness. Hey. Hey. You're being, you're being made. You're, you're being made. Oh my God. You, you, you're literally being fashioned. In the word pressure is another word. Did you, did you see that? P-R-E-S-S. -S. Uh, you are not as much under pressure as you are being pressed. Oh my. Oh my God, the word of God says that he's coming back for a church without a spot, 
a wrinkle. I can't stand wrinkles. And I realize the reason why I can't stand wrinkles is because that's a facet of God's character. He can't stand wrinkles either. <laughs> God does not like anything that looks out of sorts. It's not something that I can identify with. And I realize now there's a spiritual significance of the press. Oh, Glory to God. Amen. I know that you all are familiar with the, with, with the, with the definition of, of being moved into a place. And that is significant to what I'm saying. And that's why I was telling you that if you're under pressure, you ought to get ready for the promotion. But there's another understanding to press. There's a secondary definition to press. It is a device for applying pressure to something in order to flatten it or to shape it or to extract juice out of it. And the last definition says, or to extract oil. If you're going through hell, God is getting ready to get the oil out of your situation. If you're going through, if you're dealing with all types of mental traumas and strains, and when you try to quit, you can't quit, it's because, baby, you're good for the press. Everybody isn't good for the press. <laughs> Some material is too cheap. But remember what the preacher told you today. God is making you valuable. Oh my God. Ashanda. Look at your neighbor and say, mm, you're good for the press. In other words, there's some anointing in you. You don't feel anointed. <laughs> Can I help you? You don't live anointed. You don't look anointed. Oh my God. One more, one more. Can you stand one more? You don't even live anointed. But there is, tell your neighbor, but there is an anointing in you. Oh my God. If I were to pass this mic right now, you would show us a wonder. Glory to God. If I were to call for your testimony right now, some of you all would set the church on fire. And just because you don't feel anointed, and just because you don't look anointed, and just because you don't seem anointed, and the crazy thing is that you don't even live anointed, it's a wonder to my soul how there can still be some oil in me. Am I the only one that's captivated? By the fact that there's still some oil in me after everything that I did after who I did it with after how many times I did it there's still an in who in me tell somebody yes in you hallelujah yes in you the word of God said I don't qualify The word said, I don't call who I qualify, but I qualify who I have called. I know you may not know that you got power, but you got power. I know, I know you may not think that you got a purpose, but you got a purpose. I know you may not feel like you have an anointing, but tell your neighbor, there's some oil coming out of you. It's going to help somebody this week. It's going to encourage somebody this year. It's going to save somebody this season. It's going to bless somebody before you. And it all comes behind the pressure. Tell everybody 
on your own. It all comes behind the pressure. Come on, preach it to her. Preach it. Preach it. Da -da 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 it all comes. Tell your neighbor, stay there. Because something is coming behind. Tell your neighbor, abide there. Because <laughs> something is coming behind. Look at somebody and say, dwell there. Because there's an anointing that God is making. There's an anointing that God is shaping. There's, 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 there's an anointing that God is pressing out of you. It's the anointing for the next generation. It's the anointing for the next solution. It's the anointing for the next revelation. It's the anointing for the new nation. There's, there's an anointing. There's an anointing. It's coming out of your family because it's coming out of you. It's coming out of your situation because it's coming out of you. Tell somebody, dwell there. Stay there. Abide there. you were if you knew the business that was gonna come out of you or if you knew the book that was coming out of your mind if you can see the money that's in your bank I come to tell you I come to prophesy you won't go through forever you won't always be down you won't always be nothing you won't always have to deal with insignificance Oh, God has a plan. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan. Tell your neighbor, God. God has a plan for your life. Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. your life. My life is your life. But I ain't got no daddy. Your life. But I didn't come up rich. Yes, your life. Yeah, but I ain't wake enough money right now. Yeah, your life. Glory to God. But I had a child out of wedlock. Yeah, your life. I am not shot to the house here. But I wasn't the smartest one in the class. Baby, your life. I'm talking about your life. God got a plan for your life. Glory to God, it's going to be a wonder to my soul. Ah, Jesus. It's a wonder how I made it this far. Go to chapter 24. Proverbs 24. Hold on, man, because they don't want to shout. They'll shout for everybody else. But they won't, apparently they won't shout for themselves. But I'm 
talking about your life. In the book of Proverbs, I want you to see something real quick. Glory to God, because some of y'all need to understand what's going on right now. You need to understand something about this day. Look at verse 10. Read it. The reason why I praise God is because I don't plan on fainting. Because if you faint in the time of trouble, then your strength is small. You want to know why I can find joy? When I'm going through the worst time of my life, because that's what my strength is. Everybody wants to have a strong friend. Tell your neighbor, if you don't plan on making it, then you ain't got to say nothing. But for everybody in here that's planning on surviving the rest of 2022, I want you to show God how strong you can be. I want you to praise God despite what you're going through. I want to challenge you to praise God despite how you feel, despite how challenged you are, despite how rejected you are. Because one thing about it is I'm not going to be 